TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donation. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Deadly terror plagued Jerusalem over the weekend, claiming seven civilian lives and several additional casualties. An Iranian defense manufacturing site was struck over the weekend, drawing a pledge by the Ayatollah regime to persist with its nuclear activities. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrives in Jerusalem for talks with Israel's top leadership. Deadly terror plagued Jerusalem over the weekend, claiming seven civilian lives and several additional casualties. The first attack took place on Friday evening at 8.13 p.m., shortly after a group of Jewish worshippers concluded a Shabbat service at the Ateret Avram Synagogue in the northeastern neighborhood of Neve Yaakov. Upon exiting the synagogue, two terrorists, who were subsequently identified as Arab residents of East Jerusalem, arrived at the scene by car and opened indiscriminate fire toward the congregated Israeli civilians. Several minutes passed before police officers who were dealing with a riot in the nearby predominantly Arab neighborhood of Beit Hanina arrived at the scene of the attack and eliminated the terrorists. <laughs> מיד שהתקבל הדיווח, צמצמנו למקום כל הכוחות, כאשר בהגעתנו לאזור הפיגוע הבחנו ברכב של המפגע הנמלט מהמקום. פתחנו במרדף אחרי המחבל, תוך כדי שיורד לעברנו. ישבנו באש לכיוונו והרכב נעצר. המחבל ירד ממנו והחל לירות לכיווננו. בשלב הזה פרקנו מהניידת, חתרנו למגע והבאנו לנטרולו, ובכך מנענו הרג נוסף של חפים מפשע. The abhorrent act of terror which was carried out on the International Holocaust Remembrance Day regrettably claimed the lives of seven Israeli civilians, including a recently married husband and wife aged 48 and 45, an elderly 70-year-old woman, and four men aged 20, 25, 30 and 56. Meanwhile, funerals were held for the majority of the Israeli victims. אתה הגיבור שלי אבא, פחדת לקפח את חייך למען אחרים ואני אמצור זאת בליבי לעד ולהריץ אותך לעולמי עולמים אבא It is important to know that while the abhorrent act of terror was broadly condemned with leaders from across the world calling their Israeli counterparts to relay their respective nations condolences Thousands of Palestinians across the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley, as well as the Gaza Strip, flooded the streets of cities, towns and villages to celebrate the attack. Moreover, the Western-backed Palestinian Authority released a statement in which it proclaimed that Israel bore full responsibility for the attack, relating it to mounting tensions and violence across the Palestinian-controlled territories while the Islamist Hamas organization praised the deadly act of terror as an act of justified revenge over Israel's counter-terror operation, which killed eight operatives of the Iranian proxy, Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Jenin. The next morning, on Saturday in Jerusalem, yet another terror attack took place, this time at the upper hill of the city of David adjacent to the walled city. The terror attack was initially reported at 10.42 a.m. when a 13-year-old child opened fire toward a group of Jewish worshippers making their way to the western wall in the ancient city. From what we understand happened at the scene, it was an ambush terror attack on the hands of uh, by a 13-year-old terrorist. He waited uh, to ambush civilians that were here in the area. Uh, the ambush took place on five civilians as they were going through their prayers. Uh, we have two, in two civilians in critical condition. It is a father and a son. The critically injured son of the second Israeli victim, an active duty IDF soldier, reportedly managed to react to the shooting attack by opening fire toward a 13-year-old assailant, neutralizing him at the scene. And while the wounded terrorist was taken to a nearby hospital for life-saving treatment, police highlighted the unfortunate reality 
in which terror organizations are actively encouraging and inciting children to carry out attacks against innocent civilians. Meanwhile, during the Israeli government's weekly cabinet meeting in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu relayed a speedy recovery to the wounded who sustained separate degrees of injuries. אני בא עכשיו מבתי החולים שערי צדק והדס הער הצופים, שם ביקרתי את הפצועים משני הפיגועים הקשים בירושלים. כולנו מאחלים להם רפואה שלמה ומהירה. אנחנו גם מחזקים את הצוותים הרפואיים שמטפלים בהם במסירות אין קץ. נתניהו further announced a series of decisions which Jerusalem Security Cabinet approved as part of Israel's war on terror. אנחנו עתמנו הבוקר את ביתו של המחבל שביצע את הפיגוע הנפשע בירושלים ובהמשך ביתו יהרס. החלטנו על שלילת זכויות בביטוח לאומי ממשפחות תומכות טרור ובממשלה נדון היום על צעדים נוספים, ביניהם שלילת תעודות זהות ושלילת תושבות ממשפחות מחבלים תומכות טרור. The Israeli Prime Minister also continued by asserting that a series of measures will be advanced to further bolster Israel's presence in Judea and Samaria as a response to the acts of terror which aim to uproot the Jewish people from their ancestral homeland. כמו כן נחליט בקרוב על צעדים לחיזוק ההתיישבות ביהודה ושומרון כדי להעביר לטרוריסטים שמבקשים לעקור אותנו מארצנו שאנחנו כאן כדי להישאר. בנוסף, הנחיתי את ראש המל"ל לבדוק צעדים נוספים שעלו בקבינט והם יוצגו לציבור בהמשך. איננו מחפשים הסלמה, אבל אנחנו ערוכים לחד כל אפשרות. התשובה שלנו לטרור היא יד קשה ותגובה עוצמתית, מהירה ומדויקת. Turning to Iran were a coordinated drone attack reportedly struck a sensitive Iranian defense installation in the city of Isfahan. The sophisticated strike of the heavily guarded compound, which reportedly included a manufacturing site of both offensive unmanned aerial vehicles and ballistic missiles, among other unknown components, clearly caught the Ayatollah regime by surprise, as it quickly sought to diminish the purported impact by claiming falsely that Iran's aerial defense array managed to intercept the incoming drones. Nevertheless, speaking next to visiting Qatari Foreign Minister Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Thani, Tehran's top diplomat proclaimed that the actions of the Islamic Republic's enemies will not impede the Ayatollah regime's determination to advance its nuclear program. این اقدام بزدلانه امروز انجام شده دستگاه امنیتی ما با اقتدار در راستای تأمین عده اکثری امنیت ملی کشور عمل می کنند و چنین اقداماتی نمی تونه تأثیری در اراده و نیت متخصصین ما برای پیشرفت های هستهی سهل آمیز بر جای بگذاره While well, initial reports alluded to American responsibility, concerns over plausible Iranian retaliation evidently triggered U.S. officials and other people familiar with the operation to leak to the Wall Street Journal that Israel was behind this attack. Nevertheless, senior Israeli intelligence officials who spoke to TV7 have not confirmed nor denied Israel's alleged responsibility. Meanwhile, Moscow's Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov condemned the attack on Iran's defense facility and revealed that Russia's intelligence agencies are investigating the incident, since there are only a handful of countries capable of executing such a sophisticated strike. Meanwhile, in Cairo, ahead of his visit to Israel today, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, speaking alongside his Egyptian counterpart, Samir Shukri, responded to a question regarding Washington's joint efforts with Jerusalem and other partner capitals in the region to confront Tehran's malign ambitions. For the United States, as well as for many of our partners in the region, um, it is very important that we continue to um, deal with and work against, as necessary, the 
various actions that uh, Iran is engaged in throughout the region and beyond the region that threaten peace and security and, uh, and human life. Uh, we see that in the region with its support uh, for terrorism. We see that uh, for uh, its uh, uh, support for uh, destabilizing actions in a variety of countries. And now, of course, we're seeing that um, in a very different part of the world uh, with its support for uh, Russia's aggression against U Ukraine with the provision of drones and potentially other military uh, technology. Uh, and, of course, we see what's happening on the streets uh, of Iran uh, as people are simply trying to stand up to be able to voice uh, their views uh, and are not being allowed to do so. So um, this is something that's part of the conversation that we're having uh, across the region. It is important to know that the remarks by Washington's top diplomat were made as unidentified aircraft struck Iranian weapon shipments in Syria three separate times over the course of the past 48 hours alone. The separate convoys were said to include sophisticated weaponry, which were reportedly earmarked for the Iranian proxy al Fatimiyun brigades, which consists of Shiite Afghan militants who pledged their allegiance to the Islamic Republic's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, and are primarily entrusted under guidance of the RGC's Quds Force with Iran's smuggling efforts from Iraq into Syria. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. We would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.